Hi there, come on in. I'm Fred Trost and I want to welcome you to this show, Closing Out 1983 on Michigan Outdoors. We're going to talk about a lot of things that have happened during the past year that are significant. Look ahead to 1984 with DNR Director Ron Skoog. Show you some tapes that uh, we didn't put on earlier in the year. In fact, we have a wildlife oddity we're going to start with. There's a bird, a white pelican, that you see down in Florida and in the tropics, but white pelicans pass over Michigan and they nest far north up in Canada. But there was one white pelican this past summer on its way down, got a little off course, and landed at Harrisville. And the problem was it was blind in one eye. Taxidermist and wildlife artist Lisa Grimm found this pelican on the beach. She didn't know what to do with it. So she called us here at Michigan Outdoors. Bob Gardner made a few phone calls to the DNR. The bird ended up down here in Lansing at the Potter Park Zoo, where it's being cared for right now, and people will be able to see it this summer. So let's take our cameras to the Potter Park Zoo with Glenn Dutterer from the Extension Service and get a little insight on this white pelican that got blown off course. Course. Right. How big would you say that is? What does that weigh? Oh, that looks like that weighs 10 to 15 pounds to me, maybe. Right, probably more like 15 to 20, because uh, that's quite a large bird. Uh, Amazingly docile for being a bird that has recently been in the wild. Well, I say the, these birds do get used to human beings, and it's been, what, it's been captivity for two weeks, been fed out at Rose Lake and fed here. And, uh, they do. They do adapt very nicely. This is an adult bird. You can tell by its pink, uh, pink bill. The young birds have a, a darker bill, and it's in its winter plumage. When it's uh, an adult, it grows a horn-like projection right on the top of the, the top part of the bill, and the feathers in the back of the head get much, much longer. Mm -hmm. Those feathers look like they're sort of uh, extended, fluffed up. Yes, they are. In the and, back and of the head because it's probably nervous or. Intimidated or is well, that no, th yeah, that that's part of the display. But those feathers on the back of the head are longer than the others, so that uh, even in a normal position, you'll notice that feather protruding out behind it. What do you suppose his problem is? Lice? No, he's just preening. You know, birds have to spend a lot of time keeping those feathers arranged and keeping the little hooks on the feathers together. Uh, to maintain warmth and waterproofing. So that's just a preening process. Oh, he likes the cameraman. <laughs> he likes the camera a lot. <laughs> He's getting a little spunkier. Could I wonder, Glenn, if we could show the pouch at all. Could we try to maybe put our hand in its mouth to show? Because when we put a piece of fish in there, here, I'll get a piece of fish. Let's try to put a fish head. This is white bass. They've been eating, it's been eating chunks of white bass. If you want to grab that, we'll show. Oh, put it in the pouch. Oops. I don't think it's going to eat, but you, can see, eat. The, you can see how the pouch does stretch, stretch and, and make quite a large hmm. container. And that's part of the way that pouch works. Fish head? How's that sound? It's our first raw fish head recipe here in Michigan Outdoors. <laughs> When, you know, when, they, when they shove that pouch underwater suddenly uh, and, and, and scoop with it, that pouch expands and water and fish rush in and then they mm -hmm. close the lid on it, squeeze the water out and swallow the fish. Try to show his wingspan, which looks to be about five, six feet. Yes. Whoa, look at that. This is a big bird. Gonna subdue him here. Look at that. And these wings they use for soaring. Yeah, one of their flight pattern is an alternate flap and soar, flap and soar, so that's how even, they, they migrate at tremendous heights, so even at 4,000 feet you could tell these from snow geese, because snow geese will be that steady flap, 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 where these guys will flap, 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 and then soar, and mm -hmm. flap, 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 and soar. One of the other things we ought to point out is it's one of the neat things about looking for birds in the fall and the migration is you never really know what you're going to show up, you know, you know what will be there. And although you may see lots of geese and, and, and robins and birds that you're familiar with, uh, there's no predicting when you might have the treat of seeing one or more flock of some birds you just don't normally see, such as these uh, pelicans. 
And these oddities happen all the time. We know we get calls from time to time, and I'd like to encourage all of you in 1984, if you find wildlife oddities like this, give us a call at Michigan Outdoors so we can put your story or your bird or you on television. But I want you to stay tuned right now, stick right to your chairs, because we have some things coming up that you haven't seen, looking back at 1983, looking ahead to 1984, so stay tuned. It's Thursday night, time for Michigan Outdoors. I you know, we've taken a lot of fishing trips uh, over the past couple years in Michigan Outdoors, but Bob, you took us on a trip this past August, and when I say us, it's with a gentleman that I am so surprised that he hadn't been out on the Great Lakes before, in fact, that you hadn't been out with him. <laughs> well, that's true. You know, I've taken a number of kids out to catch their first fish, mm -hmm. but never have I taken an ex-governor to go that's catch right. his first Great Lakes fish. Would you believe it? that Governor Milliken, in all the years he was governor, during the introduction of the coho and Chinook salmon, had never taken a trip out of the Great Lakes, never caught a salmon. And I'd say we should call this fishing trip uh, the fishing trip that was better late than never. That's a good title. Let's go to Manistee right now with Captain Emil Dean, where we headed out. Uh, it was a beautiful day. I, as I recall, this was late in August. It was uh, early September. Early impressed. September. It was just over the edge of, uh, well, the Chinook were all done. They were, and the coho were, were still uh, not, not really coming in too fast. But Governor Milliken was fascinating to talk to after his tenure as governor for so many years in the state, a friend of the sportsman, and we talked to him about that. We talked about a lot of things, but the excitement came on early with his first coho salmon. For me, it's a, it's a real achievement. I'm not, whoa, look at him. Okay, got to keep the rod tip up over the... Spunky little cuss here. Look at that. <laughs> well, that's a little one, though, Governor. <laughs> to me, it looks like a large one. <laughs> that is a beauty. Pretty fish, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's a coho salmon. Go ahead and get it there, Steve. Wrap it out of there. Bill, I can't believe it. Now, how long were we trolling? Five minutes? Five minutes, maybe. That How about is, that? That is a beauty. You've, you've eaten salmon, though, from the I, Oh, yes, I've eaten salmon, but I've never caught one. And that, I understand, is about a four-pounder. Is that four right? Pounds, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. About four pounds. What and do you... good eating, isn't it? Sure is. Okay, you're the chairman of this Great Lakes Committee. What do you think about the contaminants that you hear about in fish? Does it bother you to eat a salmon like that? No, it doesn't bother me. I think, obviously, uh, this is one of the problems that we face and will continue to face in the Great Lakes, uh, the problem of uh, toxic uh, chemicals. We're going to be living with that for years and years. And how, how serious is it in your estimation? Well, I think unless we uh, continue to be concerned about it and take uh, precautionary steps to control it, it can, it can get out of hand. But uh, that's our major challenge, in my judgment, uh, in the coming decade. Uh, we have been able uh, in the last decade to uh, substantially improve the quality of the Great Lakes. Some people said that Lake Erie was dead, mm -hmm. and I think it nearly was. But now, of course, it has come back. Lake Michigan, all of the other Great Lakes are, have been restored uh, essentially to their, the quality which uh, we knew uh, in the past uh, 100 years. So actually, the concern that you have is not in cleaning up the lakes, it's in keeping them clean? It's in keeping them clean, and... Uh, well, that's a little better position to be it's in. It's a much better <laughs> position to be in than the position we were in mm -hmm. some few years ago. Boy, that was good news to me, Bob. I uh, enjoyed talking with Governor Milliken, and of course, he is the chairman now of the Center for the Great Lakes in Chicago, along with uh, Bill Rustum, who is the executive director in the yellow hat there, and we had some good conversations on the boat. Oh, it was fun. We might be able to get into some of those tapes of some of the things we talked about, but I found it very interesting, the governor's perspective on the cleanliness of our environment, and it really was very positive, something that makes me feel good going into 1984. But it wasn't long before we got back to the business at hand. This is a good size fish. It's better than the other one, isn't it? Yep. You do have your license, don't you, Governor? I do. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to know I bought it yesterday. Okay. You think that net's going to be big enough? Oh, I hope so. This is a scrapper. You're picking up line on him, but... This is a good size fish. Compared to the other one, it is. Where is he? 
<laughs> He's coming. Oh, we haven't seen him yet. There's a badger. He's right behind that. There's the badger. Here he comes. Okay, we'll get up here, OJ, and see the fish. There we go. Oh, that's it. That is a bigger one. Here he comes. Oh! Yeah, that's a little fatter than the last one. Well, look at that, that would you? <laughs> You're working your way up. <laughs> we'll get you a master angler one here if it's the last thing we do. That is a good size. Well, you're two-fifths of the way to your limit. Another one? Okay, Governor, we got your third one coming up right here. Okay, a second one. We're going to try to get you a king salmon if we can, but this doesn't appear to be a king. There's another net over there, Bill. Another net? Okay, Bill. I just recovered from the last one, and here yeah. we got another one. <laughs> well, we have about six lines out, so okay. this one is that one this is a good size one. There he is. Yep, looking flipping back there. See what you've been missing all these years? <laughs> all of these years I've been... Now lift your rod high. Oh, now he doesn't want to... <laughs> doesn't want to come in. No. There we go. That's number three. <laughs> Boy, these are as pretty a coho as you can find. Wow. <laughs> I can feel that. <laughs> want another one? <laughs> See if we can get him another one here. Okay, that's three coho towards the governor's first limit of salmon. <laughs> this is something. What an experience for a guy who never catches fish. There I have three of them. You know, for never catching fish, though, that kind of surprises me because as governor, you were such a strong proponent for the sportsman. I was, and I want to tell you that on a number of occasions, I went out to fish. Never had much luck. I went oh. up to uh, Craig Lake in the Upper Peninsula and uh, fished and fished and fished. Some of the uh, people I went with got fished, but I never did. Well, you, you stood up for the sportsman in so many ways without being an active hunter or fisherman. Why was that? I did because I feel that uh, this is one of the major assets of our state, the opportunity for people to go out and uh, recreate, to regenerate, to enjoy the uh, natural beauties that we have in mm -hmm. such abundance. We're a very fortunate state to have the, the beauty have the opportunity for hunting and fishing and to be able to do what I'm doing right now. I tell you, we enjoyed being the first ones to take the governor out and catch that his That was limit. probably the most fun I had on a it fishing was. trip. Uh, it, it was great. Good conversation, good people. We learned some interesting things on that trip, <laughs> really, did. from the governor. Now, Bob, my question is, uh, Governor Blanchard is now in the driver's seat. And we've been trying since he was elected to get him out fishing. It's been a little difficult. He's taken an awful lot of flack, of course, with his sure income is. tax, which has sort of clouded the other issues. I'm not sure that he's going to be so bad for the sportsman, even though he isn't, a, I guess, an active hunter and fisherman the same way Governor Milliken was. Well, ex expect some great things in the State of the State message for the Game and Fish Protection mm -hmm. Fund, uh, some re senior citizen reimbursement. I think we're going to have him out fishing early spring and probably over at Port Huron for the salmon runs or something like that. Well, I hope so, because of all the bad feelings about the income tax increase, I sort of hate to see that drift into the other areas. Because we he's need been good for sportsmen. We need a governor. We need leadership in the state that is good for sportsmen, and I think we've got it. But we'll, we'll get Governor Blanchard out fishing and find out more about sure. that. Bob, come on. Let's, uh, talking about some of the outdoor headlines of the past year, I think there are a number of them we have included in some of the mail that we've gotten from you viewers. Uh, why don't we start out, Ed, with a very interesting and sort of exciting letter. Right, from Ted Abner. I have watched your show on my satellite, satellite dish several times, but never know just where to catch you live. I think I heard Bob say Thursday night, what channel and what time? 
I have caught Fred and Bob on Annex D, the Canada satellite, also WTVS PBS Detroit. That is West Star number four satellite. I am not a Michigander, but I have many CB friends all over Michigan. I am from Kentucky. I loved your squirrel hunt, the fishing show, and I'm looking forward to the deer hunt show. Keep up the good work. I have had many friends entice me to fish and hunt with them in Michigan. Since I have watched your show, I will not turn down the next invite. Isn't that something? From a man in Florida. In Florida. Well, we've, we've answered his questions about when he can pick up the show, but I think he can get it about any time he wants. <laughs> he should his... just come up here is what, yeah. you, what well, he should I do. Think, I think he fishing. will. He's written a, a couple letters now because he's been excited about the show, but we have gotten letters. Well, we got a telephone call from Iowa, somebody in a satellite dish. We got a letter the other day from Alabama. Hmm. We have gotten a letter from Roundup, Montana, several from Nova Scotia, because Channel 56 is now broadcasting on all of the cable stations throughout Canada, some 150,000 Canadian households. Welcome wow. you all yeah. to Michigan Outdoors. Right. Now, well, let's sort of change the pace here on a letter. Okay. A little different letter here task. from <laughs> Michigan Center. Fred, for a sportsman of your caliber, you sure have a lot to learn about gun handling. Why don't you, you review your film on duck hunting? You are swinging that shotgun so you could have blown the heads off two or three men, and the man behind you could have shot a few legs off also. I'm glad to see half. that our viewers are paying attention here on this, but as we watch the tape, and we, I was conscious of this at the time, there's a number of factors here. We were using several of us, uh, the slings, the rubber slings, but the guns appear to be swinging towards heads, but they aren't. We were conscious of that. It's sort of an optical illusion uh, that happens in the mm -hmm. taping. Another thing, all of our guns were empty. They always are when mm -hmm. we stop and talk and chat. Actions. Actions were open, and, uh, but... We, we did get two letters on that that people noticed. They thought it, it appeared dangerous, so we have to pay attention to that. What we're going to do in the future is use uh, double barrels over and under, single shots that we break the action mm -hmm. so everybody can see that uh, there's no danger. Here's a letter from Spring Arbor. Do you plan in the future to have a special on trapping? My fellow trappers and I would greatly appreciate it. We have heard from trappers, uh, well, throughout the past year, or year or two years, asking that same question. We haven't got into it. It is kind of a ticklish issue in the outdoors, but we, I talked with Don Hoyt, who's the president of the National Trappers Association the other day. He lives in Marshall. We have it scheduled for March 29th. We're going to be trapping. We're going to go out beaver trapping, show you what that's like. We're going to go to some fur auctions. Find out what trapping is all about. That's March 29th. Put that on your calendar. We'll do a special report on trapping. And here is a letter on snagging. The DNR says that they don't have any money. Do, you, do they realize how much money salmon snagging brings in for them? There are a lot of fishermen who buy a trout stamp just for salmon snagging. I snag at Croton Dam in Nuego, and there are a lot of people from out of state bringing money into our state also. What is the reason for the ban? The fish die anyway. They let cat food companies come in with gill nuts, but they don't want to let us snag. We all paid for the fish to be there. I fish Lake Michigan almost every weekend in the summer for my own boat. Not everyone can afford their own boat or charter. Why ruin a good thing? I feel the only reason the DNR wants to ban snagging is because of the pressure they are getting from the Michigan steelheaders. Is there an organization for the Michigan salmon snaggers? If there isn't, then maybe we should start one so we could have a little say-so. Phil, we do have the answer to your question. There is an organization, United S Salmon Snaggers of America, and it's in our issue of the Club Digest. We'll have our uh, uh, address up at the end of the show, but you have already been sent one of these. Uh, I said that snagging probably will not be put to rest soon. Bob, why don't we bring in Dr. Ron Skoog, our DNR director, good, good idea. and find out what the answer is from the DNR's perspective. How are you doing, Dr. Skoog? Uh, right. 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 What, what's the scoop? Is snagging going to be dead? Is it, is it dead or does it have a breath of life in this state for those who want to partake in it? Well, I think it does not have a breath of life unless the legislature chooses to give it one. Because the uh, Resources Commission is, is pretty firm in their stand against snagging and uh, the ENR is, feels the same way. So uh, it will continue on, I guess, for two more years on a, on a couple of the areas, mm -hmm. but uh, that'll be it. So the salmon snaggers, if they want to organize, join together like they have done in some areas, they may be able to work through the legislature, but that's really the only hope. Ed, let's have another question here for Dr. Okay, Skoog. Okay, here's some water follower from Bay City. I enjoyed Mr. Skoog's interview. He will be a big asset to Michigan sportsmen. Our excellent water following in Saginaw Bay is in jeopardy. Governor Blanchard's budget cuts have hurt Fish Point this year, and Yonquin Point will be virtually closed next year. These areas are of, our, are of great importance to hunters, sightseers, and businessmen. This is another sport like <coughs> pheasant hunting that will be destined to nosedive. That will be painful. It seems Governor Blanchard will be known as a grim reaper if he is allowed to continue unchecked. Please look into it. 
What about that, Dr. Skoog? Is Blanchard the Grim Reaper on, uh, on the outdoors? Well, I think not. Uh, budgets depend on an awful lot of different kinds of factors, and uh, I can assure you we're not going to let waterfowl hunting uh, go down the drain in any way. And uh, it's just a matter of, of, of dealing with the fiscal problems that this state has. Uh, the inflation factor is, has always been a problem. Our deficit now in the, in the Fish and Game Protection Fund is a problem that we have to address. And, uh, and we simply have to, under those conditions, uh, set priorities. And uh, I think uh, these areas will certainly will get back on them uh, in, the, in the very near future. Well, as, a, as we answered here in the digest, we answered that letter in here, and we said that actually this money is license fee money that fell short. The governor had, can't even touch these fish and game areas and, and the protection fund. Well, that's true, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so these are things the that, that did it. these yeah. are things we have to deal with as sportsmen yeah. uh, through license fees or whatever to come up with. So don't blame the governor for that one. We've got to take the burden on our shoulders. Like we're facing this year a 1.9 million deficit in that uh, mm -hmm. fish and game fund, and unless we get license increases this next year, why we're going to be facing perhaps five million dollar deficit mm. next year, all of which is going to have to be translated into reductions in various programs. It's one of your big. Uh, Big missions here in 1984 yeah. is to work on that one. We have another question for you. Yeah, another one from Bay City. Thank you for a great program. Please keep us informed on the Indian gillnet issue. I hate to think what might happen to our deer herd if they open a meat market. What yeah. would happen, Dr. Skoog? Can they, they open a meat market? Yeah, can they get into deer hunting uh, unlimited? That hasn't been a question yet, and they haven't raised it with us, and it, it's certainly uh, something we may be looking at down the line. At the present time, our negotiations, which we started off on them on uh, November 30th, and we're going to continue later on in, into January, mid-January, with a three-day session. But so far, the only question is fishing. Now, down the line, I have, I have no doubt that, that hunting rights, land rights, any number of things, you know, may surface. In may time. surface, but yeah. maybe not. Don't know. It's it's uh, really uh, entirely up to the tribes themselves, uh, hmm. because the treaties certainly are broad in scope. So that they could include any any number of topics as, well, as to what uh, the rights may be. So. This will be something that we'll be looking at with you. We're going to change yeah. gears a little bit here, Doctor Skoog. Um, we're going to go to a, a, some some blooper tapes. In fact, we got to get you out fishing. Maybe you and Governor Blanchard. And I hope this doesn't happen to you. Look what happened to Ed Groves. Ed, this is one of the greatest bloopers. He wanted to erase it, but I said, let's save it. Take a look at this tape. You know how intense a person is while, while they're. Look at that, you see, he's got the fish on and he's using wire line. And he thought this is going to make a great segment, <laughs> catching lake trout on wire line. Intensity. Look at that. Uh, Just a thrill of victory out, here in, in, his, in his eyes. And he's, he, got it. he does. But now watch what happens. Watch his face, though, when he loses it. He gets it right up to the boat. And listen to this. He got off. Look at that. Look at that. He now he wants to find an audience to talk to. You see, because he wants well, to come up. Yeah, yeah. What happened? I felt. I thought. Oh, that, that's great, time. Ed. And that happened twice to you that day. We won't even show the other tape because you. He wasn't so gentle with the verbiage. <laughs> the second time around. I hope no one reads the lip. <laughs> no. <laughs> he wasn't happy. Now here's talking about netting fish. Is this the yeah? This is a muskie that uh, we netted. Now we had this on the air, but this is a lucky netting job. It's in and out of the net twice, and the second time it goes out of the net, the lure comes out of its mouth. It doesn't have the lure in its mouth. The lure is in the net. Now you can't quite see it. It's in and out, in and out. Now the lure is in the net, but they scooped it. The lure is down there by the side of the net. It came out of the fish's mouth. That would no, it's right up near the top. It's right up near the top. <laughs> okay, now here's another netting job that happened on the St. Joe River. Now watch this. Emil Dean, of all people, has a hole in the net. I don't know how that happened, but here's the fish. It flipped right through. That fish would have been gone. I mean, <laughs> no, he still had it on the line, but it was right through the hole in the net. But that's not the best one. Just, we'll just listen to this. Uh-oh, up! Bring it in. Bring it in. Oh, no. Bring it in. Bring it in. Just bring it in there. Get him. Get him. Uh, you got that on film? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Right through the net. <laughs> 
We've got to do an instant replay here. Watch what happened. What, the fish was in and through the net twice. There, right through the net. Now, th they thought they were in good shape because it was still on the line, so they netted it again. Here we had it, and he says, hey, that's how it's done. It fell through the net a second time. <laughs> that was one that we never used on the air. Those weren't the only funny moments we've had, believe me. We've had, oftentimes, we don't have such decorum when things like that have happened. A lot happened. of them never come to light. Right. <laughs> That's right. You bet. But there were a few. Ed, we do have some events coming up in 1984. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at the Michigan Outdoors outdoor calendar. Going to be a good year coming up in 1984. Best of luck, Dr. Mm -hmm. Skoog. Need some. We're going to get we're going to get you out fishing and get you on the show regularly with comments during our outdoor outdoor headlines. Now let's uh, let's close this show in 1983 yet with a look at uh, the fish that Governor Milliken caught his first coho salmon. Well, about five seconds. Well, Emil, you know I feel kind of apologetic that these are the only fish we got the governor. I mean the small ones. Well, he wanted fish for the table probably. That's right. Are you happy with these, Governor? Uh, am I ever happy? Yes, I <laughs> am. And I understand from the captain that uh, this size fish is probably the best tasting fish. Excellent. Yeah, if you're looking for fish to eat, this is the size you want. You don't want the big ones. Nice and silvery. It, it come from the Great Lakes. We have three coho here and a chinook. Which one? Here's a chinook right here. Mm -hmm. Spots on the tail. That's the one that put up the bigger battle. That put up a real battle. I think that. Uh, was about what 20 minutes 20 minutes of fight and that's what this is all about and you know it really surprises me that 14 years as governor of this state <laughs> you were the governor when coho were introduced in the salmon program and this is the first time you've you been know that surprises fishing. me too <laughs> well i think we're gonna we put an end to that right we now we put an end to that and this is now the beginning of a whole new period of fishing in my life well yeah. and you said that you haven't had too much success inland fishing and trout fishing I, I haven't had the time, and I haven't had the success when I've had the time. But now, all that will change. We're going to get you out bass fishing next spring. Why not? With Kerry Cameron. I'd like that. And show you how it's done. But these fish are excellent eating. You being the, the, the chairman of the Center for the Great Lakes, you don't have any concern about eating these fish, do you? None whatever. None whatever. They're prime meat fish. Emil, you did a good job. Almost got the governor's limit. Congratulations, Governor. Next time we're going to do bigger Thank and you. better even. Thank you.